And as many employees across the globe are now mandated to work from home, including us here at Yahoo Finance, um, we are seeing companies like Slack, the communications platform, seeing a surge in user growth. And joining us now to break down those numbers is the co-founder and CEO of Slack, Stuart Butterfield. Stuart, it's good to see you. Um, just paint the picture for us. What has growth been like for Slack over the past four to six weeks? Uh, it's been pretty pretty incredible. So not like anything we've seen in the past and really cutting across uh, all segments. So it's existing customers expanding their usage um, it's end users uh, increasing their daily uses of it. So you have more messages sent, more time spent online. Uh, it's a lot of brand new customers and new teams and organizations around the world signing up. Um, so it's been, uh, I think it's been really great for the company because there's a feeling like, you know, this is, we were born for this or this is our moment. Everyone's very energized. I think in times of crisis like this, people often look for opportunities to help. And so it's, it's kind of a privilege to, to be helpful. I love your thoughts on some breaking news we got today concerning our parent company, Verizon. It's it's branching out beyond its core business, and it's going to buy BlueJeans Network, which is seen as a rival to, to both Slack and Zoom as more people video conference. Um, your thoughts on that on that uh, deal this morning? Well, I haven't heard about it till now. I wouldn't say that, that uh, BlueJeans is really a rival to Slack at all. Um, we do have some voice and video calling features uh, built in. But we ourselves use Zoom uh, and we support Microsoft Teams, uh, WebEx, um, Hangouts, and uh, kind of try to integrate with all the different calling features because Slack is really a channel-based messaging platform. Um, the integration with voice and video, I think, is really important for end users, but that's not the purpose of Slack. Stuart, uh, Slack just raised a nice chunk of money, uh, over, what, $860 million uh, via a debt offering. Are you gearing up for some acquisitions? It's not like you guys are out there burning a lot of cash. What do you have your eyes on? No, you're right. I mean, so we did guide to uh, cash flow break even uh, at the high end for for this year, and had a pretty big balance sheet already. But um, really wanted to be in a position to take advantage of opportunities as they arose. And so there's nothing specific that we have in mind, but that could be marketing programs, that could be M and A, as you mentioned. Um, this, you know, there's a great deal of uncertainty, especially as we look towards the, the second half of the year and being in a position where we can be aggressive if we want to be um, is a good idea. Hey, Stuart, what about how this is going to change the, the face of the labor market when we come out of this? I mean, there's a survey from Gartner that says nearly three out of four organizations, they're going to move at least 5% of their workforce that used to be in the office to permanently at home positions. What does that mean for a company like yours? Well, we've been uh, very able to make this transition. It's a little hard to tell because we're this is our sixth week, I think, um, and maybe the adrenaline is wearing off or people starting to go a little stir crazy in their house because I'm not the first person to point this out, but this isn't really just normal working from home. This is working during a, a pandemic. So we had people who worked from home, uh, work remotely before this. They had home offices set up. They had child care. Their kids were, you know, weren't... Um, uh, weren't running around. They weren't having to negotiate with their spouse about who gets which part of the kitchen table to do the next video call. So I think you know the current environment is, is quite different. Um, you know, we ourselves definitely considering more employees working from home, uh, more kind of optionality there. You know, frankly, it'd be a great relief to not have to worry so much about real estate and, and to drop some of the capex um, on those buildouts. But I would say that we were especially able to make the transition because we've invested so much over the last five or six years in a culture of communication that's, you know, we try to be as effective as possible. And hopefully you, you're also a, a fan. But once you move the communication into channels, once, you know, there's a, a channel for every topic, project, you know, office location, business unit, initiative, event, everyone knows where to go to ask their question. Everyone knows where to go to give their update. Everyone knows where to go to, uh, to get caught up on something. And that makes it a lot easier because if you're a company that's really dependent on in-person meetings and email to get things done, this is going to be a very, very rough transition. Stuart, uh, you had a, a good, a real good fourth quarter with government business. You, you added 20,000, uh, I think 20,000 new uh, users in the Department of Veteran Affairs. Has the government called you up and said, hey, you know what, we want to get more of our workforce to work from home? Because let's be clear, uh, the government is not set up for that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no no single telephone number that is the, the government. But, uh, this is, you know, it's around a dozen agencies and they're all in, in um, 
different uh, different kind of points in the process. And it's not just the federal government. Um, it's state, local, municipal governments. And it's not just in the U.S. Uh, we have users in federal governments in like Norway, the U.K., Australia. Um, I, you know, the VA that you mentioned, I think, is, is one that's really exciting to me just because they operate the biggest integrated healthcare system in the United States. They're obviously going to be under tremendous pressure, and it was kind of just in time. And there wasn't a response to, to COVID. This was, you know, uh, in the works for months before, and the, and the deal happened, uh, I don't know, like, six weeks or something like that before the um, we really got this outbreak. But if we can be supportive of them in this time, I think that would be, you know, a fantastic win for us. And it would, um, you know, kind of activate some of that patriotic um, sense and, and, um, and hopefully help save some lives. I don't mean to you know, take any credit for it because it's, it's, it's entirely them, but it's a big organization. Uh, they have an enormous responsibility, um, like many parts of the government, uh, but, you know, not very well prepared to, to just work from home. And, and really, it's about the speed of the transition, right? Like it's, it's the need for organizational agility and responsiveness because even if you decided we were going to have a work from home program, we were going to transition, you know, it would be evaluated over the you know, quarters or years and implemented over the course of like five years or something. This was more like 72 hours and, you know, and what are we going to do? So there's a lot more panic and, and rush. Stuart, on the uh, on the privacy front, you know, I know you you collaborate or you you integrate with, with Zoom. Now, they've had some difficulty on the privacy front. So I know Slack has taken privacy concerns very seriously. Uh, have you went back and looked at your efforts and tried to double up those efforts? And have you talked to the people at Zoom and, and offered them any advice? Yeah, so I've, I've reached out. I'm, I'm pretty close with Eric uh, at Zoom. And actually, it's been an interesting experience the uh, the last month or so. There's a lot of software CEOs um, in a uh, multi-org shared channel, which is a beta feature that we have. But we kind of get together once a week, which is partially uh, support group and, and partially trying to triangulate on what, what we can expect in the second half of the year. But for um, uh, if we can be helpful at all, we of course would love that. And as you mentioned, big investment in security, privacy, compliance, regulatory features over the last five years. In fact, that's you know how we get business at the at the VA. Um, and it's a pretty broad spectrum. You know, it includes things like international data residency. So for our, our customers in Europe, they can have their data stored in Germany. It includes things like encryption key management, so letting organizations manage their own encryption keys, uh, which we launched last year. It was really you know important for a lot of very security conscious organizations. And still more to come there, uh, and more more under development. All right, Stuart Butterfield, CEO of Slack. Thanks for the work you're doing, and stay safe. Yeah, thank you so much. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.